So we've had a look at honor, glory, and status, and also titles to do with rewards. Those are like the social aspects of Rock Again. So let's have a bit of a look at some slightly more, shall we say, earthly rewards for your players. And we're going to start off by looking at Koku, good old-fashioned cash, which supposedly is not something you're, you're somewhere meant to be all that fussed about. It's not meant to be a major aspect of the lives that they consider or see as being too important, which is often very strange from our modern Western point of view, where everything has a dollar value. <laughs> But still, that will occasionally be a reward. Especially if you're playing a Ronin. And especially if you're playing a Ronin. It is very different if you're playing a clan samurai versus if you're playing a Ronin or a very low-ranking samurai. Because it can be all very well to have the aspiration to not care about money, but not caring about money is something that only very rich people can generally do. I think that Koku is the realm of the Heyman Samurai or anybody doing tasks for Heyman could potentially be rewarded in terms of koku. These could be tasks for merchants who want you to go do something or the extremely grateful peasants whose village you saved. They can give you this stuff. You know, it keeps your ronin alive, but it's nice to have some extra money around for, for your samurai too. Especially if you're a poor dragon. Absolutely. And it doesn't necessarily need to be actual physical coins. Especially if you're talking about your Ronin game. You can have stuff like, here, have this chicken. Here, which you can translate into Koku. We'll tr just treat it as Koku on your character sheet. You don't need to, like, put chickens on your character sheet. You can trade it further online or next time you, you barter food, some of it is actually just cooking the chicken you got or whatever. But it can also be baskets. It can be saddles. It can be, you know, clothes. It can be all sorts of stuff. And it's just a flavor. A lot of folks, especially out in the, the rural areas, didn't really deal with coinage that often. So you can mix and match whether or not it's straight up cash. Like a merchant will probably give you straight up cash, but a farmer might mm -hmm. not. I like Koku for a, a general fund for the party. I can use it as a party fund that then can go pay for, even if you're samurai, special occasions. Like you really want to have the beach episode, the bath episode, <laughs> where you, you are all going to the most luxurious ryokan in town and enjoying the bathhouses and having a feast. That's a special thing, not necessarily approved by your lord. If people have been rewarding you, doing them favors, oh, great samurai, thank you so much for saving your village. That can go into a fund and then you can fund your beach party episode. Absolutely. So we talked about rewards in terms of koku, but if we're really getting into our D&D our &D roots, we want magic items. Special items are going to come from higher status samurai or from monks religious figures, because this is magic, shigenja, supernatural beings of some types, that kind of thing. These, these are generally the people that you would bow to if you knew who they were anyway. Yeah. They tend to work best when they are targeted towards the individual, because unlike Dungeons & Dragons, what you don't want is, we found this stash of magic items, and now we have to have an argument about who's the best person to carry this magic item. And each item, it should be an interesting story point if you can make it that. So the idea that you can just pick up a plus one sword is tedious, but a special blessing from the Shrine of Seven Thunders, that automatically sounds more interesting when you put it that way. But you don't have to start in terms of special items, with fancy smashy swords, even though that might be what you think about. So I would use this scale in terms of rewards and start small and then work your way up. Single-use normal items that are hard to come by and can be used creatively are good rewards for smaller campaigns, like herbal medicine, metsubushi, which is blinding powder, I like incense clocks, which is a stick of incense you burn and can tell time and allow you to sync your 
parties' movements together. Plus, incense is a great gift. Jade arrows or smoke arrows. Special tea or, or sake that can be a gift or potentially give you a bonus in a tea ceremony or other special occasion. Stuff that can be used as part of gift giving is always neat because then it's, here's the thing and here's the story behind it. Here's how I got it. Here's how it's personal, which makes it a better gift, making everything just seem more connected and, and part of something interesting. I really like that stuff. Let's get that lovely tea we got from that monk on that mountain after we dealt with that spirit. And I think that can really add a lot of stuff to the game. Yes. Also, you need a stream of these things coming in for a party shiginja because they turn them around and use them as offerings to the kami when they're doing an invocation. Yeah. That. There are also other things like omamori, uh, sangusuri, single-use meishodo, wards, shikigami, jade petal tea. They are still single-use, but they are magical. These are more than normal. They will cast an invocation, give you a, a bonus, a special blessing, give you a free reroll. These are great items to have in play and watch your players sweat as they decide when they are going to use them. Especially if you don't have a whole lot of magic in your campaign, then that ward is really special when you get to use it. They're also... Normal but quite rare items, things that you can technically just buy or get issued. A spyglass from the Unicorn Lands. It's fairly rare and it's going to be relatively unique. Armor that has that special look, it is crafted by a particular craftsperson. It's got its own little bit of story behind it. Weapons that look just a little bit different maybe have a, a quality. Or even just hard to get ones. Rarer ones, like not everybody can get plate armor from character generation. If you got awarded one and you were a bushi, that's pretty cool. You can't just go out and buy that stuff. And your lord is not going to just issue one because you say please. There's also the possibility of getting GM enhanced special items. We have patterns for weapons and armor, but you can also, as a GM, make up patterns that provides bonuses in non-combat things, like in courts. This would be maybe a fan or a special kimono that gives bonuses to your perceived glory for a while, maybe at the winter court season in your fancy kimono. Or maybe you have a little statue of a fortune that gives a bonus to meditation when you're meditating on it. I often find that the non-combat stuff just feels a bit more flavorful very often because I, I suspect because you're using them in a social scene, you bring out those aspects of them when you use it, you just naturally. The ideas for the scale of them, the patterns used for weapons and armor give you a good idea of what would be appropriate. So you look in the shadows books and you see the patterns and they give minor bonuses. Of course, patterned weapons and armor are also maybe even more desired. That could be you know, the next thing. You can have your patterned Caillou blade or whatever. Kikita pattern, all those different other patterns, yeah. Also in the Shadowlands books are signature scrolls for your Shiginja. They allow a PC to spend XP to learn an enhancement to a spell effect. Since once they are learned, they cannot be lost. And finally, we start getting into the magic items. The minor Nemur and I, minor magic items of all sorts. I think the difficulty here is that there isn't much in the way of guidelines here. This is totally free form up to the GM. You need to be careful with them because they're the like, ultimate thing. It looks like weapons are often bound with inversions or invocations. Yeah. And if you want to go super crazy, there are the Path of Waves, Ivory Kingdoms, Celestial Weapons. It, it's going to depend on what your PCs have been up to, I suspect. 